And I said, what do you mean? He said, when you work in the public service, how is it that you cannot take a little out of the public service? And I told him, you are not a fish, and if you are a fish, close your mouth when you are swimming. And he also told me, how can you be tethered around a tree and you do not graze on the grass that is around there? I said, you are not a cow, and even if you are, remember that the grass does not belong to you. There is no shortage of attempts at rationalizing corruption in Africa, and there is no way in which we are going to fight corruption without changing people's behavior. My prescription is that we must realize that those who engage in corruption belong to a different cadre of people and that they must never be owned. The culture in many African countries that if a thief is from your tribe, you say, yes, we know he's a thief, but he's our thief. Must stop. This ownership of thieves because they come from our ethnic groups or they come from our social class or they come from our religious circle is one of the things that undermines the fight against corruption in many parts of Africa. We must therefore create an environment where those who engage in graft do not have places of refuge in their ethnic groups. We must not create an environment where when we punish people because they have engaged in graft, we then give them protection because they come from our tribes. It is a problem that is going to persist in a country such as Nigeria, but it is only through the legislature which comprises people from all parts of Nigeria that we can ensure that these thieves are not given the oxygen to breathe so that they can suffocate through their iniquities. Ladies and gentlemen, the fight against corruption is one which one can talk about for a long time. But when one is speaking in the president of the vice president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, one ought to measure one's words. One only ought to say the things that ought to be said. And therefore, as I draw to the conclusion of my presentation, there are a number of things that I think are critical in the fight against corruption in the manner that it has been demonstrated in different parts of the world. The first thing that we must do is that we must strengthen institutions. Institutions are at the very heart of the sustained fight against corruption. Your President, His Excellency Muhammadu Buhari, is on the right path. He has given us a clarion call. He is now recognized the world over as one of the chief fighters against corruption. But I can tell you that no matter how well-intentioned he is, he is not going to succeed unless you support him as the legislators. He is not going to succeed unless the institutions are strengthened. And in any event, the maximum he can stay in office is two terms. And let me tell you one thing about those who engage in graft. They have the patience that is amazing. If they can sleep quietly for eight years, only to emerge as greater monsters in the ninth year. And therefore, what we must do is to create institutions that defy time. Those institutions must be institutions that are recognized by the law. If it is the institution of parliament, it must stay strong. If it is the institution of the judiciary, it must be purged of the men and women who engage in graft. If it is the institution of the executive, it must be strengthened. If it is the EFCC, it must be strengthened. If it is the civil society, it must be strengthened. It is only institutions that defy time that will ensure that we succeed in the fight against corruption. The second thing that we must do is that we must have a raft of laws which ensure that those who want to do things that are detrimental to the society are punished and punished swiftly in accordance with the law and they are not allowed to be unleashed to the unsuspecting public. And I am happy to note that our representatives from Europe are here. For a long time, Africans who stole from Africa had safe heavens in Europe. 
It is my joy that even Europe now is beginning to close the doors. Under the World Bank, we have mutual legal assistance. If we can ensure that those avenues are closed so that they cannot keep their money away, what amazes me is that these individuals kept their ill-gotten wealth in numbered accounts. Not their wives, not their husbands knew. So that when they died, this money was enjoyed by other civilizations. We must now ensure that those who serve in the public service do not hold accounts outside of this country. If they love this country so much that they serve her, why is it that they do not have faith in having their money in this part of the world? These are things that can only be done if we have sound laws. The third thing is that we must look at our education system. What are we teaching in the 143 universities in Nigeria? What are we teaching in our high schools? Are we teaching our young men and women that you can be celebrated simply because you have acquired wealth without its source being given? We must interrogate our, uh, our curriculum and we must involve everybody, religious leaders, traditional leaders, because how can it be that amongst the various peoples of Nigeria, you would not allow your daughter or your son to marry a thief who has stolen a goat, but a thief who has stolen Naira is celebrated. We must give the goat and the Naira equal value because he's a thief is a thief. <laughs> Lastly, I have no doubt in my mind that we must introduce hygiene in our politics. The day we introduce hygiene in our politics so that our men and women who seek public office are men and women of integrity, so that our men and women who seek public office finance their campaigns in a clean manner, we will never succeed. I've always been amazed in many African countries that a person who upon being elected if he is a Nigerian for five years will earn no more than 30 million Naira is prepared to spend 1 billion Naira to go into public office there must be something that they see that we the electorate do not see and that thing is the ability and the opportunity to privatize public wealth. The day we introduce hygiene in our politics, the day we deal with the financing of our politics, that is the day that we will begin to sanitize our country, and that is the day that Nigeria will begin to be a great country. I look forward to the day, therefore, that corruption will be an exception rather than the rule. I look forward to the day, therefore, when the laws that we are enacting will be laws that will be observed. I look forward to the day, therefore, when we will have created an environment where we can prevent corruption. I look forward to the day, therefore, when national owners in Nigeria will be given to men and women who deserve it, not those who have bought them. I look forward to the day, therefore, when our young men and women in institutions of higher learning will have as their natural instinct the instinct to do good. I look forward to the day, therefore, when the EFCC may be abolished because there are no more corrupt Nigerians. I look forward to the day, therefore, when all these laws will have their pride of place. I look forward to the day, therefore, when the protocols of Africa and when the laws of Africa will be in the museum of history because corruption will have been eliminated. I look forward to the day when we will be able to say, like the man in the Bible, corruption, where is thy sting? Corruption, where is thy sting? God bless you.